Hello all, my name is Alexandria French and my presentation is over the Uyghur crisis in Xinjiang and the Belt Road Initiative as a policy solution. The Uyghur are an ethnic predominantly Muslim minority that live in the Xinjiang province of China. In 2017, China began a re-education campaign that forced detainees to renounce Islam, learn to speak Mandarin, and abandon their cultural norms. The 11 million that are not detained are under constant video and cell phone surveillance and take part in harmonization, where a Chinese policeman or military officer resides in the home of Uyghurs to watch for separatism or extremism. The Chinese government is practicing modern-day colonialism in Xinjiang with its re-education camps and brutal methodologies. Over 1,000 testimonies have painted a portrait of violence, torture, and invasion of privacy. The lives of the 2 million detainees are predominantly at risk, but other threats foreshadow devastating consequences of China's actions. Arab countries, as well as Malaysia, Venezuela, and Zimbabwe, have purchased China's networking data, which includes facial recognition and smartphone user data. The Uyghur Autonomous Region is a northwest province located in Xinjiang and has been claimed by China since 1949. In 2009, 200 Han Chinese were killed during protests after migrating to the region. The Uyghurs were protesting against marginalization and economic and cultural discrimination. Tensions continued to rise until China cracked down with internment camps, increased police, checkpoints, and facial recognition to prevent the rise of nationalism in Uyghurs and promote Chinese loyalty. China believes the Uyghurs and other minorities are direct threats to its government and territory. According to the Chinese, Muslim extremism showcased by past movements, terrorist activity, and violence are the most substantial risk to their national security. The most popular policy option is that of utilizing the Magnitsky Act, which allows U.S. Congress or the President to penalize individuals who are responsible for human rights abuses. In addition to individuals, the policy also recommends sanctioning businesses that are tied to the issue, as well as senior government officials. The U.S. has placed visa restrictions on all Chinese government and Communist Party officials, as well as their families, who are suspected of detention and abuse. Further, 28 businesses have been blacklisted by the Department of Commerce that were connected to abuse claims, as well as imposed expert restrictions upon them. The last prominent policy option is the recommendation to move the 2022 Winter Olympics. The Olympics were placed in Beijing with the hope that it would stifle human rights abuses, which have only worsened. The symbolic weight of the games is an avenue to pursue to push for change in Chinese policy because the Chinese place such a high stake in their overall image. While sanctions and restrictions are necessary components to persuade a state to cooperate, neither policy will be effective enough to force a positive shift from the Chinese government. Both are merely components of how states should be responding to such a crisis, but are by no means end goals. The Olympic situation is also problematic because China could replicate Brazil's strategy of hiding human rights abuses and even worsen the situation. Therefore, it is recommended that policy take a two-pronged approach of identity or image and economy. China has invested over three trillion in its Belt and Road Initiative, which depends heavily on the Xinjiang province because of its unique trading position in non-democratic buffer zone between China and the West. It boasts China's largest coal and natural gas reserves. The policy proposes sanctioning countries that are engaging with the trading hub in China, damaging its economy and image of power in the Asian region. In addition, rewarding countries that trade elsewhere will help push China to reevaluate its strategies. China's worst fears are a bruised economy and image, so that is the key to a policy solution, especially when so much money has been invested. Though data and evidence is scarce, a large leak of important Chinese documents broke through recently. The memo includes orders to never allow escapes, increase discipline and punishment of behavioral violations, promote repentance and confession, make remedial Mandarin studies the top priority, encourage students to truly transform, and ensure full video surveillance coverage of dormitories and classrooms are free of blind spots. The evidence points to the simple fact that these camps are trying to change identities.
In a call to advocacy, the following recommendations are made to world leaders, international institutions, political leaders, social influencers, and the general public to communicate, spread information, and increase overall awareness of this very pertinent issue. In brief conclusion, China's repressive campaign of mass detention, high-tech surveillance, oppressive control of identity, and coercion cannot continue not only because of threats to human rights, but because of the global threats posed as well. Policy adaptation, such as the ones discussed, need to be implemented to prevent China from further mistreating their own civilians. Thank you for watching. All resources are linked below in the description box.